All right, coming off a trip to the second round of the NBA playoffs, there is a ton of excitement surrounding the New York Knickerbockers. The Knicks, they tip off their season on Wednesday night when they host the Boston Celtics. So I thought it's about that time to do the official New York Got Game Knicks season preview, and I've got two guests joining me in studio for this preview. The first is the dean of Knicks Film School, Jonathan Macri, and alongside him is the founder and host of Knicks Fan TV, CP The Franchise, both here with me. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. Got to have you guys. Look, we've been doing some Knicks content for a while here, SNY New York Post, and you guys have always been remote with me, so I'm glad to have you guys in studio with me. Finally, it's, a long, it's about time. And Matt, this is our first time meeting, which is crazy. I thought you were a hologram before today, <laughs> so this is actually really reassuring more than anything else. Okay, you know that I'm real. You know it's real. CP, we've, we've met and kicked, kicked it many times before, so you know it's real. But I'm glad to have you guys here, because this is the official Knicks season preview. Before we get into the questions, how excited are you guys for this season coming off of the success that you saw with the Knicks last season? Yeah, absolutely excited. I mean, last year was a wild ride, 47 wins, fifth seed in the East, the Brunson revelation, quickly finishing sixth man of the year. You had Randall as an all-star playing at an all-NBA level. So two games short of the Eastern Conference Finals. It was exciting times at MSG, and they're carrying over the same team, and the expectations are going to be there to, to repeat that performance. So uh, I'm excited, and I'm sure the fans are too. There's that word continuity. That continuity has <laughs> to excite you, right, J-Mac? You know, it's nice uh, because it hasn't really been since, like, the late 90s, early 2000s since this team has been able to bring back a consistent winner year after year. There's been some teams that we brought back that we didn't maybe want to bring back <laughs> as they were. But this team is going to be good. They're going to be fun. But also, you know, with expectations uh, comes the prospect of disappointment. So, you know, a lot on the line this year. Spoken like a true Knicks fan. <laughs> Spoken like a true Knicks fan there. All right, let's get into it because the preseason is over. It's a wrap. Four games. It's the preseason, guys. Sometimes some people really care about it. Yeah. Some people don't. But the last preseason game against the Wizards, mm. that was not a good show. It was a pool party. It <laughs> was a pool, pool party. party. Jordan Poole splashing all over the place. The Knicks defense didn't look good. This is a team that ranked 19th in overall defense last year. Right, guys, you know about this. But when you saw what you saw in the preseason, on a scale of 1 to 10, how concerned are you about the Knicks D heading into this season? J-Mac, I'm going to start with you on, the, on this one. How concerned are you about the Knicks defense? Uh, I'm concerned to a degree. I'm not concerned because of the preseason. Look, this team uh, is filled with uh, veterans, young veterans, but veterans. They, they know how to measure themselves. That said, if this team was coming off a year where they were a good defense, that would be one thing. They're not. And if you look at their preseason rankings, I mean, it's okay to be bad. It's not great to be worse than Real Madrid, which is not an NBA team, uh, but, you know, played during the preseason. So I think given where their offense should be, you know, famous last words, if they are just a mediocre defensive team, that should be fine. Uh, the problem comes in is if they are a little bit worse than mediocre and then the offense isn't where it was last year, third ranked in the NBA, then we can run into problems. CP, you as concerned, do you think they can get to mediocre or better defensively? I'll put it as a, as a six right now. Okay. All right. The season hasn't started yet. You have to let things unfold. But my concerns with the defense is carried over from last year in terms of their big three, their ability to defend at a high level and consistently. Their three-point defense, which was woeful last year. This year you saw some spots there against Boston and against Washington as well. And then their lack of defensive versatility. They don't really have many players that can defend multiple positions, something, something that's really a plus in today's NBA. And so, as Macri said, their offense is going to have to carry them. But, but also, just like Dante DiVincenzo said in the, after the Wizards preseason game, it has to start with their effort and intensity. That's what they're going to have to bring every night. That's been a staple of a Tom Thibodeau-led team. Your effort and intensity on the defensive end has to be there consistently every night. And for the Knicks, they have to run a gauntlet. Those first 10 games are very mm -hmm. difficult. So in order to avoid a slow start, I believe it has to start on the defensive end. All right, they got to start with that Tuesday night against, excuse me, Wednesday night against Boston. So we'll see if they can do that right there. You got to get the energy started right now. And I want to talk to you guys about some specific players because, mm -hmm. J-Mac, I'm going to have this one for you because this was not a move with, offseason, I should say, with a lot of sexy moves, right? This is not what we saw. Obi Toppin's out. Dante DiVincenzo was in. Talking about DiVincenzo, did you like that move? What do you think his role is going to be with the Knicks this season? How do you see him helping the squad? 
I like the move because, you know, the NBA today, I think you want as many players as possible who you could slot into as many different situations as possible, and you could serve as many possible roles for your team. He's a wing. He's a small wing, but he's still a wing. He could defend, you know, up a position, down a position if you need him to. Most importantly for this team, he could shoot. In terms of what role he's going to play, I think he's going to be more or less the backup to Quentin Grimes. I know there was some talk about whether he would start ahead of Grimes when they first signed him. I never really bought into any of that. But I do think it's going to be vital for this team at all times to have one of those two players on the floor. Obviously, shooting has been a big question mark for them for years now. So to have someone out there who a defense has to respect, I think, is going to be very important. Um, DiVincenzo carries a longer range, I think, than anybody on the team. He gives you a little bit of the potential to bring defense into offense. He, he, you know, he knows how to blow up a screen, steal the ball, the whole thing. Um, and he could give you a little secondary ball handling. Knows how to run a pick and roll. So uh, I'll be looking for him in that role. And I'll also be curious, does Tibbs ever send him and Grimes out there together to really stretch, stretch the floor and provide your Brunsons and Randalls and RJs of the world a little bit more room to operate on uh, the inside? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we use in the minutes as a takeaway from quickly. There's a lot of questions around that that you can see. CP, I want to ask you about this, because when you look at this Knicks roster, they know they have a star in Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle has been second-team All-NBA two of the last three seasons. But when you look at the rest of the roster and you look at the Knicks, what's a player in your eyes that needs to make a leap in his development this season. It's got to happen for the Knicks. He's got to take that next step. Who's that player for you? You know what? I'm, I'm looking at R.J. Barrett, Dex. He's mm -hmm. number three in that big three. And for R.J., the biggest concern is can he play consistently night in and night out, and can he shoot the, the ball efficiently? For me, I just want to see him shoot the three ball at least at NBA average, right? But there's other areas of his game that can improve and help this team, and that's in the way that he impacts the game. What I saw from R.J. Barrett in the playoffs and into the preseason season is that he's making better decisions on his drives he's being a little bit more tactical not just trying to force the issue we know that taking it to the basket is going to be his strength but how he does that is going to determine how good of a game he has and you're seeing him make a more concerted effort in finding his teammates finding three-point shooters on the weak side taking stronger attacks to the basket not just fading away mm -hmm. you're seeing him draw contact getting to the free throw line that will also help elevate his game he averaged 19 points per game last year. If he's able to knock down his free throws at an efficient clip, he could get up to 22 points per game. Mm -hmm. But also, defensively, he's going to have to be there for the Knicks every night. As Macri said, the Knicks have undersized wings in DiVincenzo and Hart. R.J. Barrett is really on the only true wing that they have. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be tested on a night-in and night-out basis. And so, on the defensive end, he's going to have to bring it consistently every night, and that's where I want to see him take that leap as well. And you know this because this is something I always heard watching you guys, your post-game shows, the things you heard from the fans throughout the season was they wanted to see a better defensive effort yeah. from R.J. Barrett. There's a lot of talk about the offense and the shooting, like you said, definitely, but people wanted to see that as well, too. I want to talk to you, J-Mac, about another player, Julius Randle. Mm. He talked about heading into this preseason, he wanted to be more efficient. And for the most part, this preseason, he's been, I think, outside of the Minnesota game where he shot two for eight, yep. he's been pretty efficient. For you, when you think about Julius Randle, is it about the efficiency that matters with him this season and letting the offense come to him? Or is it the thing that everybody's talking about with Julius Randle, the postseason and what he does there? What matters more to you, him being efficient during the regular season? Or is it like, hey, when we get to the postseason, you got to show up? So, Dexter, famous last words here, because if I say, oh, it's only the postseason that matters, well, you know what I'm signing myself up for as a Knicks fan because we, we should never, well, look, team's good. We should never just automatically count on postseason's coming, you know, uh, let's look ahead, let's look past 82 games. No, 82 games matter. And they matter specifically for Julius Randle and how his performance is for the Knicks, I think, will determine if they accomplish their goals this year. Look, th this team's not going to win a championship this year. Sorry spoil that for anybody. Spoiler. Um, yeah, spoiler alert. Um, but what they do still very much matters. How high in the seating can they get? Can they win a playoff round? All of those things are not going to be accomplished unless Julius Randle replicates or comes close to his production from last year when he made All-NBA, which is the second time he's done that in three years. It's a monumental accomplishment. All that being said, and this is the, I'm go stepping into the danger zone here. Uh-oh. If they are lucky enough to make the playoffs and he has another poor showing, in the postseason, that will be three poor showings in three postseasons. I understand he had the injury last year. I just don't know if you're Leon Rose, how you can then go forward to the next stage of your team building, where, again, they will hopefully be a real contender. 
with a guy on your roster that you depend on for big possessions every game um, who you don't know if you could rely on once the calendar flips to April and May. So I, I'm kind of splitting the baby here, but I do think at the end of the day, even if he has another good regular season, if he flops again in the playoffs, it's a major area of concern. Yeah, it's going to be. Knicks fans are not going to be happy about it, as you guys know, talking to the fans all the time. Okay, we talked about the power forward, but CP, You've been hearing this throughout the summer. Once Obi Toppin was traded to Indiana, it's been all across social media. Knicks fans, what about the backup four? I have people asking me that all the time. Is the Knicks not, are the Knicks not having a traditional backup four? Is that a concern for you in your eyes? Is that something you should worry about or you think it's something the team can address if they need to throughout the season? It is a concern, and as much as we like Josh Hart to be a jack-of-all-trades type of player, right, when, you, when they go out there and play small, he's still going to be able to get his rebounds. He's a smart player. He knows where to be defensively, and so you know he'll be there, but there will be nights where he's just going to be oversized, and you're going to have guys that can shoot over him or maybe be able to sky over him for boards, and they're going to be in disadvantageous situations. So what we saw in the preseason is Tom Thibodeau bringing in Jericho Sims, and you're seeing the, those twin tower lineups, whether it's Sims and Mitchell Robinson. Last year you saw Sims and Isaiah Hartenstein. I think Tom Thibodeau is going to go to that look to keep his rim protection, to maintain his rebounding, and, and have a big presence out there. But nevertheless, I think that hole at the four is certainly a concern. If Julius Randle goes down, they're going to be very thin there, so mm -hmm. certainly something to watch. That's a very good point. If injury happens to Julius Randle, who slides into that four spot, who can play that there's not a traditional four, at least right now, on this roster? All right, this one's for both of you because this, this is the question. We've been talking about this from the time you guys have been doing videos with me the last couple of years. You know what the question is. All the Knicks fans, when are the Knicks going to trade for a star? So my question to you is, to build off of that, is, all right, fans want to see the team trade for a star. They'd like to get somebody else to pair with Jalen Brunson. Do they need to make a trade this season to compete with the projected elite teams in the East. J-Mac, I'm going to start with you. Does it have to happen in the 2023-2024 NBA season for the Knicks? So you say compete. Yes, that uh, was a word, compete. Compete. <laughs> Compete's a funny word because compete can mean a lot of things, right? Um, I, I said already I, I don't think this team is competing for a championship this season. That said, as they are built right now, can they win a playoff series? Can they win multiple playoff series? Can they put a scare into a Boston Celtics team that, you know, has the, the highest over-under total in the league? Absolutely. Can they do the same, you know, with the Milwaukee Bucks? Should it come to that? Absolutely. They can do all of these things, but, you know, I like to say, like, NBA history is undefeated. And when you don't have a player on your roster of a certain caliber, you know, with some exceptions, the, you know, the 2004 Detroit Pistons, the most famous one, the odds are that you are not going to be hoisting a trophy at the end of the season. So... You know, I, I think they are going to test the idea that depth by itself, you know, going truly nine deep can get you uh, to a certain point. But as far as being a real threat to come out of the East, I, I, I would not say that they, you know, as, as they are without right. that trade that you're talking about. Um, that they're a threat to do that right now. So don't have them as a threat to be there right now is really competing with those elite teams. Do you feel, CP, they've got to make a deal this year? Is this the year they've got to jump up to that elite level, compete with the Bostons and Milwaukee's, as everybody's saying? I don't think so. I mean, if it's not there, don't force it. You certainly don't want Leon Rose to make any panic moves. They've been going okay so far. But it's a star-driven league, as John said. And one star had emerged for the Knicks at the playoff level, and that's Jalen Brunson. Yeah. He took on two of the toughest defenses in the East, really with relatively no problem. And in the elimination game against Miami, he scored 41 points. Uh, the thing is, is that he needs help. He needs help from his supporting cast to be able to knock down shots. And as John said which Julius Randle is going to show up in mm -hmm. April, May, and beyond. And so that will determine just how competitive they will be against the upper echelon teams in the East. They fell two sh games short of the Eastern Conference Finals last year. I believe they can still get there should things break right. Your top two stars play well. They can knock down some outside shots, and they play defense at a high clip. But to really be a true contender and really get – to where they're meeting the West for the Larry O'Brien Trophy, I still think they need that one more guy. Oh, one guy, and they're, they're a bit short right now. Okay, so thinking that they need them one more guy, that brings us to the next question. Who is that person? Who's that guy that the Knicks should go out and get? So, J-Mac, putting you right back onto the hot seat right here. CP just said this. Got a star, proven playoff performer in Jalen Brunson. 
who do you think is the star they should pair with him, go out to after him, and who do you think is most attainable? Because it's one thing to throw out names, yeah. right? Yeah. It's another thing to be like, who can they realistically get? So who's that guy for you that you would want the Knicks to trade for that you think they can realistically get? You just nailed it. it it's towing that line, right, between who can you get. There's, you know, there's quote-unquote stars out there who the Knicks probably could have traded for this summer. Um, we all know the names. Carl Anthony Towns has been a name uh, that has come up during the preseason. He's a star, right? He's made the All-NBA team, the whole thing. You know, Zach Levine, there was, you know, Bradley Beal at the beginning of the, the summer before he got traded to Phoenix. These are all stars, but they are also not the level of star that is going to get the Knicks to where they need to go. And then you turn to a different kind of conversation, and then you bring up the, the Giannis's of the world and the Luka Doncic's of the world. Again, these guys would be great to have, but are they attainable? So when we think about both of those things, I, I always come back to the same guy, and it's Joel Embiid. And maybe I'm being a little presumptuous with what's going on in Philly, but uh, it doesn't seem to be going well in the city of brotherly love at the moment. There doesn't seem to be enough brotherly love to go around that team, uh, specifically with James Harden. So if it goes poorly there, and I'm obviously not breaking any news here, um, does Joel Embiid ask out? And I think that's the main question that concerns the Knicks this year that doesn't have to do with their roster, their team, what's going on inside their building. Because if he does ask out... Um, is he the perfect star? No. You know, playoff performances, injuries, getting up there in age, the whole thing. I get all of that, and I appreciate that. But if you're in a position that the Knicks are in, you don't always get to pick and choose. You know, so if he's the guy that becomes available, I think he could work very well with Jalen Brunson, and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens if it comes to that point. Yeah, I like that. I think he could be a good fit there. I think he could be a great pair with Jalen Brunson. Though there's questions, like you said, the health, the playoff performances, and all that. CP. You just said before and I asked you the previous question, you talked about not forcing a move, not rushing to making a move, kind of keeping that patience. So for you, who's that attain? Is it, is it Embiid also or are there other guys you look at as attainable stars you think that the Knicks could go out and get? I would love the Embiid uh, acquisition. I would love it for the Knicks. It's just I just feel like there's a lot that has to go right mm. for them to be able to get him. I, I don't think Daryl Morey is going to be in, in any rush to send him up the turnpike to a division rival. So there's a lot that has to unfold before Embiid even becomes available. But the guy I have my eye on right now is going to be Donovan Mitchell. I mean, he, his contract ends after next season. He's already let the Cleveland Cavaliers know that he won't be signing a contract extension. Wasn't necessarily the place that he wanted to be traded to from the Utah Jazz. We all know about his roots in New York. He's here every day in the summer working out. And so I just think that the Knicks are going to be looking at that Donovan Mitchell acquisition again. I feel like the spider rumors are going to start to ratchet up as the season progresses. Once they play, they play the Cavaliers on back-to-back -back games in the first 10 games of the season. Maybe they meet again in the playoffs, but as the season progresses, I think you're going to hear that Donovan Mitchell chatter a little bit more. All right, spider rumors coming back for the Knicks. Could hear that heating up again, so it'll be very interesting to see. J-Mac, I want to ask you about the schedule because you guys have both oh, mentioned this yeah. and, and we always look at You want your teams to get off to a good start. Knicks fans would like to see them get off to a good start, but the schedule is challenging to start for the Knicks. Ten games in the first 19 days, three back-to-backs in that stretch. They didn't get off to a great start yeah. last year. How imperative is it that they get out the gates playing well this season, especially with this tough schedule? You bring up last year, and I actually think because this group – with the exception of Josh Hart, who wasn't here yet, and DiVincenzo, who, who is new, because they had that experience of going through a period of time where, you know, there were people calling into CP show, there were people, you know, sending chats to me, fire Tom Thibodeau, trade everybody, fire Leon Rose, the whole thing. It got dark, and it got dark. Real quick. Or, yeah, Real quick very too. fast. It Real didn't quick. take a long yeah. time. So this group has that collective muscle memory. You know, I remember after that first Dallas game, Jalen Brunson saying, it's on us, we need to fix it. And to their credit, they did. So can they withstand a tough start this year? Yeah, I think they can because they have that experience. That said, um, you can't fall too far. Uh, you know, a different team, better team. But I remember 2013-14 coming off of the second round playoff appearance. That team got off to a 3-13 and start. Now, there were some injury things going on, and, and, and I just think back to that. From that point forward, you know, if you take away that first month, they were one of the best teams in the league, but they dug themselves such a deep hole. Now, again, I think this team is better than that team. Uh, there's no Andre Bargnani, Bargnani here, which is a good thing. Um, Bad but, memories for the Knicks fan. Yeah, yeah. not great. <laughs> uh, but, you know, 
four, four and six, I would even like, you know, that's not the end of the world. It's where you get into like the three and seven, two and eight uh, territory. You're like, okay, you, you might have too, too high a hill to climb. So it doesn't have to be a fast start. If they could just hang around 500 and give themselves a, a fighting chance and not get too far below. Okay, that makes sense. But starting the season, let's talk about that. Nick start the season against Boston, okay? Tough test early on, CP. Yeah. It's going to be – it's a good measuring stick. I think yeah. as a fan of a team, you want to see how your team stacks up against elite competition. How do you think this team stacks up against the elite in the East, and what are the keys to them getting a win in the season opener? Oh, the, well, the Boston series, the Boston matchup is, is going to be tough. Obviously, yeah. it starts with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, right? Anytime you have two guys that can get it going in isolation, they're going to give defensive fits, defenses fits, so the Knicks will certainly have their hands full. But I think the addition of Chris Dobbs Porzingis adds another wrinkle to their offense. Number one, he's going to space the floor and open things up for them. Playing off of those guys and pick and roll and pick and pop situations is certainly going to be dangerous. But he's another guy that they can dump it down to in the half court. He may have a mismatch on him, use his size, use his height, shoot over guys or be able to attack the paint. So he certainly adds a different wrinkle to their offense. Drew Holiday as well, another guy that they can dish it to and make plays for, his, for himself and his teammates. And then additionally, their three-point attack. You know that Joe Missoula is going to want to let it fly. They moved from ninth to second in the NBA last year in three-point attempts. That trend is going to continue when you look at the pieces that they have on their roster. So that next defense that we talked about early in the show is going to get tested right off the bat. Defensively, when you look at Drew Holiday and Derek White, you got the best defensive backcourt in the NBA. And then so Jalen Brunson is going to have his work cut out for him. Tatum and Brown can defend as well. You have Chris Stops applying rim pressure. And so for the Knicks, their two guys, their two headed monster of Julius and Brunson, they're going to have to get it going in isolation. You hope that the supporting cast can knock down their open shots, but also getting out in transition. Tom Thibodeau wants to play fast. I believe that's an advantage that the Knicks can have over this team. Get out, get after the long rebounds. If the Celtics are going to be shooting their threes, get those long rebounds, push it in transition, try to find the defense offset or off balanced where you could have your advantages there. And then lastly, I think the Knicks should have the bench advantage over the Celtics. The Celtics' depth is one question mark that I have regarding their team. The Knicks putting out a quickly Hart, DiVincenzo, maybe you have R.J. Barrett running with that unit, Isaiah Hartenstein. They should be able to get after it on both ends, and I think that's where they'll have their advantage over the Celtics. All right, we will see Knicks Celtics on Wednesday night to start the season for them. Should be a good one. Good early test, guys, yeah. that we hope is a successful season. Speaking of success, nice transition here. Success means different things to different people, <clears throat> right, guys? You can look at one season and say, hey, this is successful. Somebody else might feel differently. That's fine. But I'm going to ask you both this to put you in a hot seat. Jay, Mack, I'm going to start with you. What does a successful season look like for the Knickerbockers in this coming season? And what has to go right for the Knicks for it to be a successful season? Well, to answer the first question, yeah. The vibes, the vibes, the vibes. The vibes need to be good after this season. Uh, look, it, you could be a good NBA team and get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. It's possible. We've seen it happen out, out west this year. Surely some good teams are going to get eliminated in the first round. Um, you could win 50 games and not make it out of the first round. I think for the Knicks moving forward, the thing we have to remember is the good PR that they've gotten where you have, you know, the Bob Myers of the world who now works for ESPN saying, hey, um, a star is going to want to come to the Knicks. Andre Iguodala. Uh, just was interviewed recently. Once upon a time, he said, no one's going to the Knicks. Now he's saying someone's going to want to come to the Knicks. Um, that needs to maintain because if that maintains, again, that we need, they need to make the big trade for the big star, that star is going to want to come here if the vibes are still good. Now, what is going to make the vibes good? That's kind of your, your second question. Yep. I think it would help if Jalen Brunson, and this is going to sound crazy, can he take another step up? You know, he was a borderline all-star last year. A lot of people said he should have made it. Can he go from borderline all-star to all-NBA caliber player? The Knicks seem to think he can. A lot of fans think he can. I think he can. Um, but he needs to actually make it happen. And then the other thing is, is there a young player, whether it's R.J. Barrett, who CP talked about earlier, Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, any young player, make a leap where you could say, oh, that guy, he might be an all-star someday. He might be an all-star next season. Um, I think that would be really important whether that player cements himself as a core piece here or potentially becomes the centerpiece of a trade down the line. Uh, we don't have to make those decisions, but it would be nice if, if those things happen. And then, uh, you know, 
you know it when you see it as far as a good team in the NBA, a team that's heading in the right direction. So for me, that's, that's, I'm, I'm not putting any, any round. They have to win a certain amount of playoff games, anything like that. Uh, but just keep the vibe strong. Oh, just don't, don't worry. He, he didn't put a number, anything, <laughs> predictions. He was talking about development. We will get to a number. We'll get to we will it. get to a number soon. But when you look at that, is it about development for you too, CP, in terms of how you view success for the Knicks this coming season? Yeah, I think you certainly want to see them take that next step, right? As I said, they finished two games short of the Eastern Conference Finals last year. You hope that they can get back to that point, whether it's getting out of the first round, and, and if they lose in the second round, be a tough out. Right? And you also don't want to flame out in the first round and get swept or, or no. be gentlemen swept out of there when no. you, you were a better team than that, right? So you, they certainly want to maintain that. But as Jonathan said, they're at this point where if they don't have that star player in their stable, you want to see your young players taking another step up. And whether that's Emmanuel Quickly, who finished second in six man of the year voting last year, or that's a Quentin Grimes, who many fans have high expectations for. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's R.J. Barrett. Hopefully it's Mitchell Robinson. Mm -hmm. If your young players are helping you win games, then you feel a little bit better about having to be desperate to, you know, to go out and get that next star. Maybe it's, maybe it's development from within. And so that should be a goal for this team. But in order for them to get there and maintain where they finished last year or exceed that, it has to start with the big two. Brunson played at an all-star level or beyond that. Uh, health is going to be very important. You saw that they lost Julius Randle at the worst time last year near the end of the season and then, and then re-aggravating that, that uh, ankle sprain in the Cleveland series in the first round. So those two guys playing at a high level is going to be of the utmost importance. We talked about the young guys. And then also being able to maintain the excellence on the offensive end that got them ranked third in the NBA, which is their isolation scoring, their ability to limit their mistakes, limit their turnovers, and getting second chance opportunities. They're going to need to get second chance opportunities if they're not going to be able to shoot the ball as efficiently because defensively, I'm not sure if they're going to be as strong. So th those are some of my keys there. All right, there we go. We talked about success there. But now, this is the last, the last thing I have for these guys because they've been so generous with their time for me uh, joining the preview this next season. Here we, here we go. J-Mac, you know where I'm going with this. CP, you know where I'm going with this. It is prediction time, guys. It's all about saying it with your chest, saying what you think is going to happen. How many wins will the Knicks get this season, and where do you think they will finish in the East? CP, I'm starting with you first right. on this one. Let's get the camera focused. All right, there you here go. we go. <laughs> this is the prediction. The fans always wait for my prediction. I always leave it until last. Like, I wait till the last minute. I'm going 48 wins. Fourth seed in the East. I'm going to get Boston one, Milwaukee two. Fans not going to like this. I'm going to put some respect on Cleveland's name right now. I think their ability to play defense at a high level with the Twin Towers and at with Allen and Mobley. Yeah, I think Mobley is going to take another step up in year three. They have two all-star scoring guards in, in Mitchell and Garland. And then they upped their three-point scoring attack with Struess and with Niang. I think Cleveland deserves some respect there. And I think they'll win a lot of regular season games. So I'll put them at three. I'll put the Knicks at four. 48 wins, that's my prediction. Said it strong with his chest there, 48 wins. J-Mac, I know you've been waiting till the last minute for this. I know this has been a little bit of thought process for you to get this done. What's your prediction? Where do you have the Knicks finishing in the East? Can I take a bathroom break? <laughs> uh, no breaks, no breaks. The hot seat is right here. So I've been going back and forth. I think they're going to make the playoffs. Let me start there. Um, I've been going back and forth in my head between – literally what CP just predicted, 48 wins and a four seed, and some a little lower, 45 wins, 46 wins, and a six seed. Um, so I'm going to split the baby. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to say fifth seed again, just like last year. I'm going to say 47 wins again, just like last year. Uh, I don't think they're going to face off against Cleveland in the first round, though. I think Cleveland, I think like you just said, I think Cleveland's going to be the three seed, and I think it is going to be a first-round matchup that will have many eyes on it, because I think it's going to be with the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't know who's going to be on the Philadelphia 76ers by that mm -hmm. point. Um, but I know the big guy's still going to be there because they're, they're not trading him uh, this season, that's for sure. And uh, uh, you know what? Full chest, right? Full, it's, say it with your chest. There we go. Say I, th it. I think they beat Philly in that Let's matchup. Go. There Let's you go. go. Uh, go. I'm not predicting anything else other than that. But I think that first round against Philly, they win against the Sixers. And uh, off we go into uh, what will be yet another offseason full of uh, fun and games. Okay. 47 wins for J-Mac. 48 for you, CP. You guys said it with your chest. This was a great Knicks season preview. This is, this is great. I appreciate you guys coming through, man.
Had a blast, man. Excellent conversation. And Thanks for having us. No, you're welcome. I want to let the people know you can follow these guys. The great work CP does with Knicks Fan TV. Check that out. Hit the thumbs up button for your boys there. Also hit the thumbs up button for Knicks Film School and Jonathan Macri. CP, I had to ask you this because I found this out the other day and I meant to ask you. You are doing something for opening night. You guys are doing something to get the fans together for a watch party, correct? Yes, yes. So we will be having the opening night happy hour and watch party at the Dean. That is 39th Street and 7th Avenue, right by the garden, six blocks away from MSG. So for those of you attending the game you can come to the dean for a happy hour before you head to the game and for those of you that want somewhere to watch the game come over to the dean we'll be there It'll be a great time all right it should be a good time i got to pull up last year i pulled up to uh your watch 40, party 40. I, did, I did it at 40 40 yeah, i did it yeah. with you guys for the game one of the playoffs against yeah. the Cavs. it's a good time check that out like i said check both these guys out two of the best in terms of content creation around the knicks Appreciate y'all always. I'm glad we finally did this in studio. Absolutely. You're going to have to come back on the yeah. show throughout the season, so we're going to have to do this. And you know we're going to be talking a lot of Knicks. The digs are pretty nice, so I think I could yeah. make, <laughs> find it in my schedule to come back and visit you again. I, I appreciate you doing that. Now you know what's going to happen. If, you, if the Knicks are off or – well, if they exceed the predictions, everybody's going to be happy with that. Yes. If you guys are below – if they're below what you predicted, people won't be happy about it. It's man. It, it is yeah. what it is. It's the nature. It's the nature of sports media. It when, is what it is. When have the Knicks ever disappointed? Yeah. I, I don't. I just. I don't see that being a, a realistic. Po aspect. Positive vibes, guys. Positive, positive vibes. vibes. We're gonna have positive vibes. That yeah. is Jay back. Knicks Film School. CP the franchise. Knicks fan TV. Joining me here on New York Got Game. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.